good evening uh, my dear students and viewers uh, i am professor martin working as a head of the department of ent and head neck surgery so it's sort of the medical college hospital dhaka now today's topics allergic rhinitis nasal polyps atrophic rhinitis these are three topics this is very important for your exam today i will speak some uh, english and bengali mixer what most of the teachers you know speak because i think that would be much more understandable than what i am saying with english these things many of the students may not like this so i think i should practice bengali as well now allergic rhinitis uh, the first one look at this picture chobi ta dekhle bujhte parbo dekho amar bangla oto orkom mane pranbondho bangla na kichu to amar anchole ki ache uh if you look at the picture you see the patient has got running nose no just carrying a handkerchief uh the eyes are very congested you know so allergic rhinitis ta oi rokom allergic rhinitis ta je somosto rogi gulo ashbe dekhbe je tar sob shomoy nak diya pani porbe nak chulkabe chok chulkabe dekho itching hobe nak bondho thakbe sob shomoy hate tissue paper niya thakbe eta hocche allergic rhinitis তো এটা বাংলায় বললাম এটির জন্য যে বোঝার জন্য সো দ্যাট ইউ ক্যান ইজিলি আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ড হোয়াট ইজ অ্যালার্জিক রাইটিস অ্যালার্জিক রাইটিস ইজ ইম্পর্টেন্ট ফর ইউর এক্সাম বিকজ উই ইজুলি আস সাম কোয়েশ্চেন্স অ্যাবাউট অ্যালার্জিক রাইটিস হোয়াট আর দোজ কোয়েশ্চেন্স দ্য কোয়েশ্চেন্স আর হাউ ডু ইউ ডিফাইন অ্যালার্জিক রাইটিস নাম্বার ওয়ান কোয়েশ্চেন্স নাম্বার টু কোয়েশ্চেন্স হোয়াট আর দ্য কমন অ্যালার্জেন্স উইজ উই এনকাউন্টার ইন অ্যালার্জিক রাইটিস হোয়াট ইজ দ্য প্যাথোফিজিয়াল যে হাউ ইট হ্যাপেন্স অ্যান্ড হাউ দিস পেশেন্ট প্রেজেন্ট টু ইউ and how do you treat this patient so these are the uh, key topics or key notes of allergic rhinitis now how do you define allergic rhinitis we define allergic rhinitis is is a type 1 every point is important because you have lots of hypersensitive reaction 1 2 3 4 so this is type 1 ige mediated okay inflammation of the nasal mucosa following exposure to allergens this is the classical definition of allergic rhinitis this is ige mediated type 1 inflammation of the nasal mucosa following exposure to allergens that is the definition of allergic rhinitis how could you define this allergic rhinitis in bengali it's impossible to bangla bolte paro je eta ige dara type 1 inflammation of the nose kintu eta to bangla holo na bangla english mixer hoye gelo so it's better to uh, answer the questions in english so that you can carry a very good marks and you have to write down in your uh, question paper in english not in bengali that is my question so definition of allergic rhinitis we understand this is type 1 ig mediated inflammation what are the common allergens for allergic rhinitis look at the picture so we divide the allergens into grass pollens molds and we also divide this into animal dander and house dust mite this is very important uh, house dust mite now if you look at this we divide the allergic rhinitis in two subgroups one is seasonal that means in any particular season especially when there is pollination in grasses in flowers in trees the people particular group of people they have the allergens to particular pollens molds and that occur in particular season in a year and that is called seasonal allergic rhinitis and there are some persons to those who have allergic rhinitis or allergy throughout the year most of the year and that is due to this particular two things one is how house dust mite and animal dander there are some people those who have uh, their pets dogs cats cows anything anything can happen but especially in the western world they have dogs at the house they have cats in our country we don't have that much dogs and cats at our houses we usually keep them outside our houses so we don't have that much allergy but in western world they have most allergy from the animal dander 
so there are four subgroups of allergens common allergens are your grass pollens and how and your molds we have also houses mite and animal dander now grass pollens molds they cause seasonal allergic rhinitis house dust mite and animal dander they cause perennial perennial allergic rhinitis that means throughout the year what is the pathophysiology of this allergic rhinitis now this is this picture is uh, not uh, the easy one but i want to make you understand very easily now think of that in the exposure to one allergen when any allergen enter into our body against that allergen our plasma cell produce antibody ige antibody and that ige antibody is y shaped is y shaped like this so this stem this is called fc portion and this two two arms is called fab portion this portion for allergens and this portion is is bind with the mast cell or basophil so this y shaped ige attaches with the basophil or mast cell and then when there's re exposure of same group of allergens and that allergens bind with the two arms of the of the ige this is called fab portion and once the bind this is the antibody and outside is allergens so antigen antibody reaction occurs and they degenerate the mast cell or basophils and they release lots of inflammatory mediators that he's just seen sra slow reaction substances leukotrienes prostaglandins and they produce the all the features of allergic rhinitis as i said in bengali that nasal blockage that means nak bondho hoye jacche nak de pani portase this classical hachi and shordi pani portase nak dia running nose chulkache is itching and chok chulkache that means itching of the eyes so these are the common features of allergic rhinitis look at the symptoms of allergic rhinitis so all this nasal congestion nasal blockage disturbance of smell not getting any smell and congestion nasal drip all these and if you look at the eyes look water of the eyes and red eyes you know patient may have allergic rhinitis may lead to sinusitis pressure effect frontal headache all this and patient have a itching of the throats hawking or or itching of the throat can also to pharyngitis patient may have also itching of the ears as well as Uh, from the allergic rhinitis patient may have uh, eustachian tube dysfunction patient have otitis media diffusion or hearing loss so all these are the features of allergic rhinitis the classical features are running nose sneezing stuffy nose postural grief nasal discharge and also itching of the eyes red eye you know throat congestion or, or itching of the throat and sometimes the ear ache all this so these are the common features of allergic rhinitis so the, you look at this all this time you know cleaning the nose and use handkerchief or tissue paper look at the eyes congestion of the eyes red eye features of allergic rhinitis now if you examine the patient what you get in allergic rhinitis so these are the features symptoms of allergic rhinitis but when you examine the patient nose you will get that the nose is very moist you know watery nose in bengali we say nakta bhije gese right so watery nose or moist nose nasal mucosa may be pale normal nasal mucosa color of the turbinate are very pink color or pinkish color but here it is whitish color pale color so if you look at this this picture so turbinates look at the turbinate here and here the whole turbinate is very much swollen edematous turbinate you can also get some sorts of nasal polyps in nose in our examination because allergic rhinitis and nasal polyps are very much interlinked related so you can also get nasal polyps on examination of the nose but most important features of allergic rhinitis in nasal cavity examination is your moist nose pale nasal mucosa and turbinates especially intra turbinates are very much big 
and hypertrophied. Now, the how to treat allergy or iodis? The number one is evidence of allergens. Is it possible? Well, it's very difficult, it's very difficult to avoid allergens, but if there is a known allergens, like in food allergy or your how does my, we say, you can change the carpet, you can clean your bed sheets time to time, you know, you can also wear a mask and uh, you can avoid uh, your pets, like your dogs, your cats, try to get away from that in this way. And also during tarium pollination, you can also wear a face mask. You can try to avoid that area. So these are the evidence allergens, but uh, in your exam, you only write evidence allergens, one line. You don't need to explain, okay? Next is medical treatment. That is the most important treatment of allergic rhinitis. Now, what are the medical treatment for allergic rhinitis? We usually use antihistamine. You can prescribe any antihistamine, uh, fexofenadine, uh, non threadine but it's less effective uh, against allergy. Mostly you can use citrazine, loratidine, any preparation, montilucus, rupatidine, any antihistamine you can use once daily, especially at night time. And the effective treatment of allergic rhinitis is your steroid nasal spray. That is a very much effective. Fluticasone, beclomethasone, momitasone, momison or meta spray, two puffs at each nostril, two times a day for three to six months. Any other spray, so steroid nasal spray is very important. Antihistamine, important. Other antihistamine like sudam promoclacate, these are also available, but these are the classical treatment. Yes, antihistamine and steroid nasal spray. Now, other uh, treatment, most of the cases improved by these two treatment, but sometimes still the carbonate is very big. Patient cannot have nasal breathing very well. So you have to reduce the size of the carbonate by surgical treatment. This question we ask in the exam, what are the surgical options available for hypertrophied inferior carbonate? That means the carbonate is very big as you uh, seen in your, your picture, how to reduce the size of the carbonate. So there are some surgical options for carbonate hypertrophy, the surgical treatment. Number one is electrocauterization of the carbonate, ECT. Number two, submucous diathermy of the carbonate is called SMD. And number three is your uh, partial inferior turbinectomy. That means we can chop the half of the turbinate or social, mostly enter part of the turbinate. Uh, uh, we have different techniques of that. So it's called PIT or partial inferior turbinate, turbinate reduction. So it's called partial inferior turbinectomy. There are other options like I use cobblation, a very classical method of reduction of turbinate is cobblation turbinate, turbinoplasty. We have laser turbinoplasty. So different surgical options. What about the immunotherapy? There is one type of vaccine. Nowadays, some doctors are using the allergy specialists. They are now introducing the vaccine, but the problem is we have, as we have lots of allergens, we don't have any fixed single allergens. So a purified allergens we can in, uh, inject uh, and in response to that purified allergens, like any other vaccines, you know, they produce blocking antibody. This is called IgM antibody. That is currently available. Some uh, countries in Bangladesh as well, but we just don't recommend this one. There's some lots of hazards, uh, hypersensitive reactions. So uh, I suggest only uh, important treatment three. One is antihistamine, number two steroid nasal spray. That that's all. But if not improved, still blocked, nose blocked, we can use surgical options. That means uh, either ECT, submucous diathermy, or laser or cobblation or partial intro term. So that is all about allergic rhinitis. So this is the treatment, uh, as you know, uh, I already discussed, uh, this is the steroid nasal spray, this is the antihistamine, uh, that's all, but there's also injection, like long-term steroid injection we can also give, uh, time 
Injection we can also give for long term uh, benefit. Okay. And uh, just this is the steroid nasal spray, as I said. Why I'm showing this picture? So that you can remember that we, we saw a picture steroid nasal spray. And surgery treatment already I discussed. Now, if you don't treat allergic rhinitis, they have lots of complication or comorbidities from allergic rhinitis. This question is for postgraduate students, not for you. For undergraduate, we usually don't ask this question. But yes, allergic rhinitis is associated with, with your asthma, with the sleep disturbance, infection, rhinosinusitis, nasal polyps, you know, ear problem, like as I said, auditory video diffusion. So all this is the effects of allergic rhinitis. Missing is school and work sometimes. We have so allergy, so blocked nose, so sneezing, running nose. We may miss some is school, we may miss our uh, working place. So these are the complications. Not complication actually, association with the allergies. Okay. The effect of allergic rhinitis. Okay, so that's all about allergic rhinitis. So in, in two minutes, in one minute, uh, what did you learn from these topics? So Allergic rhinitis is a type 1 Ig mediated inflammation of the nose following exposure to allergens. There are two types. One is seasonal, another is perennial. There are some common allergens. One is uh, grass pollens, uh, moles, and then we have animal dander. We have house dust mite or microparasite. So these are the common allergens. And in, in exposure to allergens, we produce antibody. It's called IgE. It's initially produced by plasma cells and then it has got two portion, FSC, FC portion and FAB portion. This FC portion is fixed with the mast cell or, or basophil. FAB portion is attached with the allergens, the uh, reaction with the allergens and uh, antibody, that is degeneration of the mast cell or basophil releasing all the mediators and they produce allergy. Common problems, nasal blockage, nasal obstruction, sneezing, running nose, itching of the eyes, headache, yeah, arteritis middle diffusion, sore throat or pharyngitis. And treatment is your medical treatment, mostly in the form of antihistamine and steroid nasal spray. Colors. Clinical problem solving questions in the exam. Suppose a 25 years old male patient presents with bilateral nasal obstruction, sneezing, running nose, itching of eyes. What is your diagnosis? Very straightforward. So my diagnosis is allergic rhinitis. How to treat? To discuss. Next topic is your nasal polyps. This is very, very important topics for exam uh, because this is very common topics in different aspects. One is in the MCQ. There are some questions put in MCQ about nasal polyps. Number two, we, we give a short case in your exam, nasal polyps. And we also put some clinical problem solving questions or some questions in your short essay question paper. That's why it is very important uh, uh, of nasal polyps. Now, we we learn these topics in different aspects. Keynotes uh, discussion is your uh, definition, etiology, what are the different types of nasal polyps, how to differentiate between ethmonal polyps and endocrinal polyps, how to differentiate between hypertrophied input carbonate and nasal polyps, how to diagnose nasal polyps, what are the presentation, how to treat, and if you don't treat, what are the complications? So that is all about nasal polyps. Define nasal polyps. Polyp kake bole. Okay. In that, it is an invariable question in the exam. It's, it's most of the students we ask this question, polyp. Uh, in Bangla, log juna sha bole, rugira sha bole, ki bole, sir, ama nake mangsho bidhi hoise. So eta ki jodhi English ya bolo, tala bol is a fleshy mass, is, is, a, is a fleshy growth in the, nasal, in the nasal cavity. So how do we define nasal polyps? There are uh, many books defined in many ways, but I usually define in one way is the polyp is defined as, <clears throat> there are some adjectives describing polyp. Number one is defined as edematous. Number one, ad adjectives. Number two, hypertrophied. Number three, pedunculated. Okay. So, nether is defined as hypertrophied, edematous, pedunculated, mucosa, 
of the nose and parietal sinuses. That means mostly is coming from the parietal sinuses when the lining mucosa is initially inflamed or hypertrophied. Then in the connective tissue stroma, there is lots of fluid collection or water inside. So these edematous. And then due to the nose, repeated nose blowing, or there is a gravity, you know, gravity, always pulling that hypertrophic mucosa, and then gradually they become pedunculated. That means jule pore. Gramuza dexa tumra, machar vitro lau dia dai. Mane lau jogon hoi, reki lau ita bole. Mane ki bole reke. Lau ba kodu, chai bolonakano. Deko jo utum dike to hoi alpo hoi. Gradually gravity in his account the same. That is the laugula irkum jula ek the polygram of hoi. The polygula irkum basically. So this is defined as is a hypertrophied edematous pedunculated mucosa of nose and parietal sinuses clinically present as a grayish white or yellow structure so you can say polyp is is extra growth or, or a flesh of, of tissue in the nasal cavity usually looks like a grayish white or or whitish in color definition of polyp there are bollam Monaga adjective, edematous, hypertrophied, pedunculated, prolapsed and pedunculated mucosa of, of nose and parietal sinuses. That is polyps. Clinically present as yellow structure or, or grayish white structure. Now, what are the etiology of polyps? Why the polyps occurs? We usually, when we were in the medical student, our professor Nulamin sir. FRCS. He described etiology of another words only three. One is allergy, number two is infection, and number three is combination of allergy and infection. But, but nowadays we say the etiology of nasal polyps, number one is idiopathic. That means we don't know why there is polyps. I'm not Janina, cannot polyphy. So number one. Etiology is idiopathic. Number two, allergy. It can be allergic to any, anything that they describe allergic rhinitis. It may be food allergy, environmental pollution, any other allergy. So number two is allergy. Number three, repeated infection of the nose and parietal sinuses is a, a leading to inflammation of the lining mucosa. And they change the mucosa basically due to the chronic inflammation from ciliated coronary epithelium to cubical epithelium or squamous epithelium, you know. So infection and number three, so number one, idiopathic, number two, allergy, number three, infection, number four, combination of allergy and infection. That means mixed, both can exist. Infection and allergy can go side by side, okay? Then there are some other cause of allergic, another polyps is your drug, is called aspirin. Aspirin is an important drug for allergy and for polyps. Food allergy, there are some disease maybe linked with the nasal polyps like your celiac disease and cystic fibrosis. So these are the common uh, etiology of nasal polyps. We can also put in MCQ. Types of nasal polyps, usually we divide the nasal polyps in two types. One common is Ethmoidal polyps and another is anthroponal polyp. For the exam, only you have to know these two types that ethmoidal polyp is very common and anthroponal polyp is very rare. Mostly patient has got polyp. When you say polyp, we always say, we always mean ethmoidal polyps. And we have also anthroponal polyp. Now, what about the ethmoidal, what are the ethmoidal polyp, anthroponal polyp? That is a question we usually ask this in the exam. Look at this polyp. This is my picture, actually. I, I removed after industrial sinus surgery. Uh, look at this. The, these are macroscopic polyps. And these are the, the root. That means from the origin of the polyps, we try to take it out by endoscopic sinus surgery. If you don't remove this one, if you remove only the outer one, then the polyp will come back. Our recurrence is very high. So these are the ethmother polyps. Now, what are the features of Ethmoidal polyps. The first thing is 
the ethanol polyps usually occurs in adult fashion. So ethanol polyps occurs in adult fashion, number one point. Number two point, ethanol polyps arises from ethmoidal air cells. So origin ta hoche, ethmoidal air cells thakya, ethmoidal polyps gula ashbe, origin korbe. Number two point, number three point, the ethmoidal polyps are bilateral. Dwinagi thakbe. Nasal obstruction thakbe dwinagi, bilateral, ethmoidal polyps. Number four point, it is a number multiple in number. Look at the picture. Multiple. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here is eight polyps. So multiple in number. It model polyps. And shape of the common looks like a bunch of grapes. Deco, eight polyps to deco. So monohebe jeta angura toka. Angura toka. I mean, take a cave elbow. Okay. I want to enjoy these grapes. Look like a bunch of grapes. So this is ethanol polyps. Now, it usually presents in the internal cavity. Ethanol polyps hardly go back to the posterior corner. That means when you examine the posterior space or nasopharynx, you will not get any polyp in case of ethanol polyps. Usually, mostly in the nasal cavity. So it is arises from the ethmoid air cells. Now, question is, why ethanol polyps multiple in number? Why? The answer is as the ethanol air cells are multiple, not single. And it arises from the ethanol air cells. That's why ethanol polyps are multiple in number. So this is the features of ethanol polyps that it is common in adult patient. Most polyps are ethanol polyps. They're linked with the allergy. Most etiology of the ethanol polyps is allergy. It's a bilateral, multiple in number, and looks like a bunch of grapes. So that is your ethanol polyps. What about the antroconal polyp? Look at this polyp. This antroconal polyp is very common in children, teenage boy, adolescent boy, and girls. The antroconal polyps are, so this is the single uh, younger age group in boys, girls, adolescent boys and girls, Bharatara Vasar Bacha, Chodhapunra Vasar Bacha, Idhari, antroconal polyp. Okay. Achha. Look at this picture. This is unilateral. So antenal polyp, unilateral, act the hobe, unilateral. Bacha de hobe. Now, the origin of the antroconal polyp, they arises from the maxillary sinus. Okay. So how this antroconal polyp then come to the nasal cavity? So it arises in the maxillary sinuses, and then due to the effect of gravity or repeated nose blowing, they prolapse. <coughs> through the natural ostium of the maxillary sinus. Coming from the maxillary sinus through the natural ostium to the middle matrix, to the middle matrix. And then they gradually go back towards the posterior corner to the nasal pharynx. And then coming into a little bit to the nasal cavity. So the anteroconal polyp tendency is go back. Anteroconal. Antro means Antrum, maxillary antrum. Quana means posterior quana. That's why it is saying anteroquanal. So it is single. It common in adolescent young adult group, younger group. It is it arises from the maxillary sinuses, and then coming through the natural ostium to the middle meters, and going going toward the nasopharynx, the posterior quana, and then coming internally. So its shape, what does it looks like then? It's a dumbbell shape. You see just box a dumbbell, the dumbbell shape. Look at this classical one. I just uh, removed this one. Look at this. This is the antroconal polyp. The bigger one, this one lies in the nasopharynx. This is the maxillary sinuses, and this is coming to the nasal cavity. So look at the, these are three dilatation and constriction. One, two, three. Usually say, uh, Dumbbell shape, okay? Classical antroconal polyp, dumbbell shape. Look at this also. Look at the dumbbell. This is dumbbell shape. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. 
is it net is okay sir okay no that's okay. okay okay so this is dumbbell shape look at the picture uh, if you see the previous picture you know lots of a bunch of graves but here is a uniform uh, dilatation and constriction uh, of anteroconal polyp now what about this one this is the aged man suppose this is a 60 years old male patient presents with a unilateral polypoid mass is a with reddish in color is it nasal polyp the answer is no many of the ent doctor they do uh, they do mistake of saying or di diagnosing a 45 years old or 50 years old uh, uh, patient with unilateral polypoid mass as anteroconal polyp that is absolutely rubbish okay absolutely rubbish never occurs anteroconal polyp in in older age group with this scenario and i am very sorry for this doctor never this is the nasal nasal tumor or nasal mass okay this is not anteroconal polyp polyp usually looks like a very white in color and this is a unilateral nasal mass this also a reddish in color is unilateral nasal mass is a not anteroconal polyp so what did you learn from this discussion that anteroconal polyp occurs in children adolescent is gray white in color if any unilateral nasal mass occurs in older age group and that is not anteroconal polyp now clinical presentation how this nasal polyps present to you now it depends on actually anteroconal polyp or epiphyseal polyp let us discuss the epiphyseal polyp first patient may have nasal congestion bilateral nasal obstruction patient may have allergic component like sneezing running nose patient may have post nasal drip nasal discharge for the nasal polyps patient may have sinusitis so patient may have facial pain patient may have frontal headache or facial pain okay and what are the smell patient may have disturbance of smell so this is the features of it model polyps so nasal obstruction nasal discharge sneezing running nose full of sensation facial pain headache patient may have disturbance of smell maybe anosmia or maybe hyposmia so this is the classical presentation of it model nasal polyps what about the anteroconal polyp the anteroconal polyp usually due to infection epiphyseal polyps usually due to allergy so anteroconal polyp patient may present initially with a unilateral nasal obstruction and then nasal blockage very rarely they have itching running nose or nasal you know congestion possibly mostly they have unilateral nasal obstruction initially but when the polyp go back and in the posterior corner they fill up the full posterior corner and they can block the both posterior corner so eventually they may present with bilateral nasal blockages or bilateral nasal obstruction okay but initially unilateral obstruction patient may have as this is in the nasal pharynx so in the nasal pharynx what is the important structure there is the eustachian tube so anteroconal polyp can block the eustachian tube causing ear ache recurrent ear ache patient may have otitis diffusion or ome so these are the features of anteroconal polyp in addition to nasal problem patient may have ear problem ear ache hard of hearing patient may have otitis media with diffusion so patient may have hearing loss in one side patient may have eventually if it is blocked the both sides that can also block both ear but usually unilateral ear ache hearing loss nasal obstruction unilateral all features of anteroconal polyp if you examine the the features dry nose disturbance smell now so we discuss about the ethmona polyps and the polyps now before that if you examine how it get in your exam because that's your short case in case of polyps enter an endoscopic examination you will get multiple gray white polypoid structures in both nasal cavity 
they are multiple in number, gray white in color. Okay, and if you just touch with your probe, and they are not sensitive, so insensitive to touch, and it doesn't bleeds on touch. So this is your finding in short cases. On examination of the nasal cavity, I found the multiple gray white polypoid mass in both nasal cavity. They are insensitive, pale looking. Okay, if you do posterior endoscopy examination, you will not get any polypoid mass in the posterior corner. So this is ethmoidal polyps. What about antechoronal polyp? In the antechoronal polyp, your finding is, sir, on examination, the nasal cavity, I found a single grayish white polypoid mass in right or left nasal cavity. And on prop examination, it is it, it moves all around. It is not fixed laterally. So the differentiate bottom turbinate is not fixed laterally. It is free all around. And on posterior anoscopy examination or PNS examination, I also found a grayish white polypoid mass in posterior corner, in the right or left side, in right or left posterior corner. So that is the features of antroquinal polyp. On anteroanoscopy examination, we found a grayish white single polypoid mass in right or left nasal cavity and is insensitive task. It, uh, we can uh, pass the probe all around. It's not fixed laterally. And on posterior anoscopy examination, I also found a grayish white polypoid mass in the right or left posterior nasal cavity or postural space. So my diagnosis is right left sided anteroquinal polyp. So this is your examination finding. Okay. Now investigation. How to investigate nasal polyps? Now, if you think of the ethmoidal polyps, sometimes we send some blood for uh, you know allergic tests like your uh, total eosinophil count or IgE test. Uh, this actually to find out the link of ethnopolyps with allergy. But if I say, what are the important investigation for nasal polyps? Uh, I think that is radiological investigation. If you want to investigate, and that question is asked also in the OSPE examination, I will show you here. So in visual routinely we can do X-ray, paranormal sinuses, occipital mental view number one, and if you want to do a very good delineation of anatomy, you can go for coronal CT scan of paranormal sinuses. Coronal CT scan of paranormal sinuses. Look at this X-ray. This is the classical X-ray for your OSPE examination. Okay. How do we get here? Look at this. So this is the X-ray, parallel sinuses, occipital mental view, showing haziness or radiopacity haziness in the right maxillary sinus, or you can say right maxillary sinus is completely opaque, as well as there is soft tissue shadow in the right nasal cavity. Look at this. Left nasal cavity and left sinuses normal. Ethmoidal cells are normal, frontal sinus normal. So what is your diagnosis here? This is a classical example. This classical radiological X-ray of antrochonal polyp. So this is your OSPE investigation, X-ray panel sinuses, occipital mental view showing a haziness or radiopacity in the right maxillary sinus, as well as there is soft tissue shadow or mass in the right nasal cavity. Other sinuses are radiolucent or normal. So my diagnosis is right-sided antrochoronal polyp. This is OSPI. Now, next question is, what are the DD of this X-ray? So different diagnosis, they say one or two or three different diagnoses. Number one is your Ringer's papilloma, because they're also coming from the uh, maxillary sinus and coming to the nasal cavity. So it's called Ringer's papilloma, number one. Number two, it can be angiofibroma, juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma, or it can be carcinoma of the maxillary sinuses. But in case of carcinoma, there may be bony erosion, but here is not. So these are the D. Okay, so this is all your OSPI. 
Now, I would like to say one important uh, findings here. Another X-ray, you can also get X-ray, soft tissue, nasopharynx, lateral view. Look at this X-ray. How nicely it delivers the antrochoronal polyp from the from the adenoid. Look <clears throat> here. So this is X-ray, soft tissue, nasopharynx, lateral view. If this is a case of enlarged adenoid, you will get a soft tissue of সম্মানিত চিকিৎসক বিন্দু আমরা মনে হয় সারের সাথে সংযুক্তি বিচ্ছিন্ন হয়েছে সম্মানিত চিকিৎসক বিন্দু আপনারা একটু সময় অপেক্ষা করেন স্যারের নেটওয়ার্ক কি বিচ্ছিন্ন হওয়াতে ইন্টারনেট প্রবলেম হওয়াতে স্যার সংযোগ কি বিচ্ছিন্ন হয়েছে অল্প সময়ের মধ্যেই স্যার আবার যুক্ত হবেন ক্ষেত্রে আমরা যেটা পড়লাম আমরা দেখছি পলিপের ক্ষেত্রে এটাকে দেখানোর জন্য is given in my book as well uh eta ta amon rakhba tumra so excess soft tissue uh, neck lateral view amra korte pari you can do actually in case of antrochoronal polyp tale amra kintu eta korte pari so extra pns oxygen mental view and also we can do extra soft tissue nasopharynx lateral view like adenoid but the important part is your ct scan the coronal ct scan of parallel sinuses you can see clearly here the soft tissue shadow 
or hypertension shadow in the maxillary sinuses, uh, and this is ostium and as also filling the nasal cavity. What about the ethmolar polyps? In X-ray paranormal sinuses, if you get X-ray PNS, what you will get in ethmolar polyps? You can get some haziness in the ethmoid ear cells. You may not get any haziness in the maxillary sinus or may get. Why you can get haziness in the maxillary sinus? Because of the polyps can block the normal drainage of the paranormal sinuses, normal drainage of the maxillary sinus. That's why there's retention of secretion and that can give a soft tissue shadow or haziness. But ethmoid polyps actually, to clearly identify the ethmoid polyps, the most important investigation is your coronal CT scan of parallel sinuses, you see the polyp. Look at this here, is a whole, the polypoid mass in the ethmoid areas here, mucosal thickening as well. And look at this here, lots of polyps all around the ethmoid ER cells, okay? And also there is retention of secretion. You can say, is this polyp coming from the maxillary sinus? No. This is due to retention of secretion on both sides as they block the sinuses. And this is another classical uh, uh, example of ethanol poly. Look at this. The whole nose is completely blocked by soft tissue mass, as well as they also retain the secretion, uh, prevent the secretion of the sinuses, maxillary sinuses. So all are hazy or hypertensive area. So this is the investigation of choice is a coronal CD scan. But the problem is in our country, it's expensive. Uh, CD scan usually costs about four, five thousand taka, sometimes three thousand taka. But our people are very poor, you know. So for you people, what to do? But for the cost of the treatment, if it is possible, we have to do CD scan. But because without CD scan, we cannot do endoscopic sinus surgery. But sometimes I do uh, because I know I am I am following the disease. So in the endoscope, I follow the polyp and I take it out. Uh, sometimes I don't need CD scan. But this is for me actually. But for general people. Your investigation of choice is coronal CT scan of parallel sinuses. Now, how do you treat? How do you treat nasal polyps? This is very good question for the exam, for written paper, as well as for your OSCE examination. Uh, so treatment is two, div uh, two division. One is medical, another is surgical. Medical treatment, uh, very, when you will go for medical treatment? The number one, uh, initial nasal polyps, early stage, we can use medical treatment. Number two, suppose advanced stage disease, patient has got multiple comorbidities, when surgery is contraindicated, we can go for medical treatment, number two. Number three, patient doesn't want surgery. No, 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 I don't want to do any surgery. Please give me some medicine. So that is one group that I will give medical treatment. Number four, after surgical treatment, we can also give medical treatment to prevent recurrence because ethmoidal polyps usually tends to recur the people will say, oh, doctor, I have given you lots of money, but my polyp come back and give my money back. Should we give, give your money back? No. So for that reason, to prevent recurrence, sometimes we, we give medical treatment. What are the medical treatment for nasal polyps? Especially for ethmoidal polyps. We're talking about ethmoidal polyps. Because again saying, when you say nasal polyps, we always say ethmoidal polyps. But surprisingly, in our country, we are getting lots of endocrine polyp as well. Even in our textbook, Scott Brown, now they, they didn't write even a single word of endocrine polyp. They all write about nasal allergy, infection, and, and ethanol polyps. But still, we are getting endocrine polyp, and you'll be getting endocrine polyp in your exam. Okay. So, medical treatment in the form of number one is antihistamine, like Monte Lucas group. Um, uh, Monte Lucas, 10 milligram in case of adult, number one. Number two, steroid nasal spray, like allergic rhinitis treatment. Steroid nasal spray is very effective. We can reduce the size of the polyps with steroid nasal spray. Uh, Beclamethasone, amometasone, fluticasone, anyone, you have to write down steroid nasal spray for three to six months. Uh, we can also use oral steroid if it's not contraindicated for any other comorbidities, you can use prednisolone. It's a very good drug. We use prednisolone as medical treatment. We could also use prednisolone before surgery to reduce the blood supply of the nasal polyps so that we can get a very avascular surgery, surgical field. Okay? So medical treatment in the form of antihistamine, steroid nasal spray, and sometimes you can also give oral 
uh, oral steroid like prednisolone. So that is one medical treatment. But most of the cases of nasal polyps, we need surgery. So what are the surgical options for nasal polyps? So we divide into two. One is for epimodal polyps and for endoconal polyps. Now, what we do for epimodal polyps? Uh, for your exam, for uh, there are many uh, old surgeons. Uh, they are not used up with the endoscopic sinus surgery, so we want to listen something. So for you people, the number one surgical options is endoscopic sinus surgery, functional endoscopic sinus surgery. When we came back from England, it was long ago, about 1999, you know, in those days, we are only two or three surgeons doing endoscopic sinus surgery in Bangladesh. Me, Ali Alamin, and hardly there is one other doctor, Roji Hawk, he was doing some endoscopic this year. But frankly speaking, endoscopic sinus surgery, I started uh, by me and Joel Alamin. We also worked together in Ireland uh, and England as well, so we came back. And in those days, people are saying, oh, what they're doing? But now, over the 20 years, most of the junior surgeons, senior surgeons now, they learn this technique, and we are teaching this, and they are learning. So endoscopic sinus surgery is the number one option for nasal polyps. Number two option, internasal polypectomy. That means you take the polyp out as you see in your headlight or your telescope. So take it out. This is called internasal polypectomy. Number two option. Number three option, if polyp recurs, come back again and again. So we can go for external approach, external ethmoidectomy. That means we take out the polyp from the origin, from the ethmoidectomy cells by external approach. So these are three. One is functional endoscopic sinus surgery. Number two is your internal polypectomy. And if it recurs and recurs, then go for external ethmoidectomy. Three options for ethmoidal polyps. What about, what about the antroconal polyp? The treatment of antroconal polyp, again, one number one is endoscopic sinus surgery. First, number two, internal polyvectomy. Number three, we can also, as antroconal polyp coming from the maxillary sinuses, so we can explore the maxillary sinuses through the cheek here. It's called cult oil lab operation. You can leave this, uh, retract the cheek, and in the canine fossa, you can make a window, and we can just uh, enter into the maxillary sinus through an inner wall. It's called called wild lack operation, but we cannot do in younger children, like about 14 or 15 and above, or 16 and above, we can go for called lack operation. Otherwise, we can go for internal polypectin. So these are the options for, three options for endocrine polyp. One is endoscopic sinus surgery, Number two, internal polypectomy, and we can go for anterior washout. And number three, called wild lab operation. This is uh, the, the functional endoscopic sinus surgery. In old days, I used to use direct telescope, but now, as you know, we have video monitor, so we can see these polyps. We can take it out, no problem. Now, look at this. What, this is actually the uh, endoscopic sinus surgery. We can also take the polyp by micro. Debrider, I can show one just a uh, one second video if it works. Look at this. So this is the this is the micro debrider. You can take the polyp out. Okay. Now this is the after industrial sinus surgery. Uh, these are the you can see the polyps as well as the all ear cells, epidural ear cells, so that. We can take it out from the root with the endoscope. Uh, these are the basic forceps for endoscopic sinus surgery. This is straight biting forceps. This is the back biting for enterostomy. And uh, this is upward biting forceps. We can take polyps and take it out. We can follow the polyps, how it goes. Where it, where it go? I want to take it out like that, okay? And this is a telescope. Mostly it's a Carl Storz uh, zero degree telescope. We can use also 30 degree. Uh, this is a Freyars elevator. So these are the basic instruments for endoscopic sinus surgery. Now, so what did you learn for epinal polyps? Uh, sorry, for polyps, that polyps edematous, the angulated uh, uh, lesion in the nasal cavity. 
grayish white in color uh, usually ipan pole look like a bunch of grapes endocron pole is a dumbbell shape endocron pole arises from medial sinus and ipan pole from the ethmoid air cells or the endocron is single this is multiple uh, and the treatment options for polyps especially ethmoid polyps is surgery and that is endoscopic sinus surgery for all treatment of polyps if you don't remember anything remember only one option is functional endoscopic sinus surgery or face other options as i said and medical treatment we have also in the form of antihistamine and steroid nasal spray uh, so that is all about nasal polyps differences between endocron and ethmoid polyps we i discussed one is single multiple origin number shape all this now one question very much asked in the exam how to differentiate polyps from infraterminate hypertrophy many of the younger doctors they refer us hypertrophy infraterminate as a nasal polyps they do mistake and that question repeatedly asked in the exam in your short short uh, cases or in your oral exam how to differentiate hypertrophied infraterminate from nasal polyps so number one is if we say only one difference that is infraterminate is fixed laterally with the bones with the intraconca so terminate is always fixed laterally but polyp is free all around number one and that is the difference other differences color polyp grayish white or white color terminate pink color or red color sensitivity if you touch with the probe polyp painless but infraterminate sensitive painful if it can bleed on touch in case of terminate in polyp doesn't bleed on touch So these are the difference between polyp and, and hypertrophied infraterminate. This question is very uh, much asked in the exam. Now next topics, uh, I I will take only few minutes for that because we we started today we started late actually. I think 15 minutes later I started. Uh, but the thing is, I was uh, from uh, just I was giving you the assurance that I will uh, speak uh, Bengali, but unfortunately uh, this is not my habit and how to do actually because. I try to speak Bengali, but it is not coming up. So, what I could do? I think, please forgive me because uh, spontaneously this English is coming up, not Bengali. So, what I could do? I think you will understand. No problem. Now, next topic is your atrophic rhinitis. I will take only five minutes because this is very important uh, question for exam. Repeatedly, you ask this question in the oral exam in your short notes. What is atrophic rhinitis? So, it is defined as chronic. inflammation of the of the nose where there is atrophy of the turbinate mucous membrane glands nerves that means all the components in the in the in, in the nasal cavity they are atrophied okay they are atrophied this chronic inflammation of the nasal cavity when there is atrophy of the of the bones turbinates nerves and there is presence of viscid secretion in the nasal cavity or nose which rapidly dry up to form a crust and that crust emits very characteristic foul smell that is the definition of atherosclerosis in a from the textbook i also uh, also also written in my book as well in this way but for you people for clearly understanding that it act a disease that is a nakta sukhaye jay ek number kotha dui number kotha नाकर भेतरे मईला पड़े बगुड़ार भाषा बोल चलता बट इन इज कल्ड इन क्रास्ट इन साम एरिया लाइक मयमी सिंह अन्न कौरा बुस्टी चिरांगे कि मैं ये क्रास्टर बांगल् कि विभिन्न जगह विभिन्न रकम बोले क्यों बोले नाक दिए चलता पड़े क्यों बोले बुस्टी पड़े और जेखान दुर्गन्ध छड़ा सो एटिकाइन सम्बन्धे बोलते गले बुझते जो ना के एक बड़ बड़ो चलता मैला पड़े दुर्गन्ध छड़ाई रोगी क्लियरलीफिकेशनिकेशनिकेशनिकेशनिकेशनिकेशनिकेशनिकेशनिकेशनिकेशनिकेशनिकेशनिकेशनिकेशनिकेशनिकेशनिकेशनिकेशनिक
we usually divide these atrophic arteries in two groups. One is primary, that means idiopathic group, that means we don't know actually the cause. Another is secondary, secondary to some diseases or some condition. But mostly it is primary from unknown cause. We don't know the cause. There is some genetic factors, racial, hormonal, environmental, like this atrophic is very common in female, younger age group. So it, this means there might be some female hormone, estrogen, progesterone deficiency that can work on that because it's more common in female, younger age group. Okay, vitamin deficiency, vitamin A, D, E, iron deficiency that can cause these atrophic rhinitis. So there's some infective cause like saprophytic bacteria, diphthroids, ozonia, clepsila, some other saprophytic bacteria can work on that. Okay. So this is the primary cause of atrophy rhinitis. We don't know the cause. It can run some family. I have seen one patient come uh, brought to me with their uh, two children all having atrophy rhinitis. So they run in family. So familial. Secondary is gross DNS can cause atrophy rhinitis. If you do tarbinectomy, uh, industrial sinus surgery, that can cause atrophy rhinitis. But I am doing, I have been practicing intro tarbinectomy for a long time. I never got any atrophic rhinitis in my series. So, although we are saying tarbectomy is the important cause of atrophic rhinitis, but it's not. Okay, now, uh, what are the clinical features? As I said in Bengali, that patient like Yuhavashe, so patient complains of patches of crash from the nose, greenish color crash from the nose, discharge of crash, number one. Number two, nasal blockage, Filling of, sub, of nasal blockage, nasal obstruction, number two. Number three is disturbance of smell. That means no smell. Rugi gonna gondo paina. No smell, okay? Headache, patient may have sinus arteries or headache. Patient have epistaxis. There's some crash can, when the crash dislodge, they can leave behind some bleeding. So epistaxis. These are the features, symptoms of, of atrophy rhinitis. Most important part, the go, they run away from that. Because of anosmia or atrophy of the olfactory nerves. Okay. So these are the common features of atrophic rhinitis. Now, if you examine the patient, what you will get in atrophic rhinitis? Number one, when you get the patient, you will get a bad smell. That is the number one. That examiner will get a bad smell from the patient. After marriage, married life, divorce rate is Husband oh my God, from that. When they sit beside some girls or boys, they ran away from them. Oh my God, what hell? So it's a social distance when I socially isolated from the society, Asian was to the psychological breakdown. Hoi one. Divorce hoi that's one. In the one family, the couple came to my chamber with the attributary special and brought their child about five, six years old or even seven years old. And I, I can't believe this. How could this husband stay with this wife? for a long time, for 10 years, 15 years. I must salute that husband. If I were in, in his position, definitely I could divorce my wife or I ran away from that. I definitely, definitely. Okay, so this is the right. Now, when you examine the patients, you will get a bad smell from the, exam, uh, from the patient. And you examine the patient's nose, you'll get some greenish crash from the nose. And you get a roomy cavity, nasal cavity. Nasal cavity, very roomy because of atrophy of the turbinate. So nasal cavity are very roomy and dry, okay? And this you will get in examination of the nasal cavity. Now, investigation of atrophic usually we don't need any investigation, we are very straightforward, but still if you want to do, you can get X-ray, parallel sinuses, occipital mental view, you will get some sinusitis. Treatment of atrophic is very frequently asked in the exam. In every ask in the exam, every alternative students will ask atrophic that is very important. Now, mostly medical treatment in the form of you have to discourage the crust. 
by giving some alkaline nasal dose. What are those? 25% glucose in glycerin. 25% glucose in glycerin, nasal drops, very frequently, three, four, five times a day. And that's to be continued. You don't give it for only for timing, for one month, two months, but it has to be continued. 25% glucose in glycerin. What, are, what does it work? How does it work? Now, glucose you are giving for feeding the saprophytic bacteria that, oh bacteria, please don't eat my turbinate. I am giving, I am giving you sugar. I'm giving sugar, please eat sugar and spare my turbinate. That is why I'm giving 25% glucose. And for uh, in glycerin to lubricate the discharge, the crust, so that the crust can easily dislodge from the nose and take it away so that that, that can heal very nicely. So that is one, 25% glucose in glycerin to discharge the crust. And number two, alkaline nasal dose, like sodium bicarbonate, sodium chloride, sodium borate, or simple alkaline or normal saline wash. That means it, uh, take a, uh, take a uh, just a, a pot, small pot with some slightly warm water, put some normal saline or table salt, mix it up and, and clean the nose with your Higginson syringe or PPC syringe, flush the nose three, four times, okay? So this is nasal dose, 25% glucose and glycerin, nostril drops available, and that is one medical treatment. Now, and also sometimes if it's block the sinuses, you can also uh, go for enteral ulcer. Once you continue with this and also supplement vitamin, iron supplementation, vitamin D, vitamin A, all supplementation, and patient usually improves with that. And also ask the patient to use some perfume to get the bad smell, to get rid of that smell, okay? Use perfume. In this way, most of the time it heals. But if it not heals, then you go for surgical options. Hardly we're now doing surgical options. Mostly we're giving medical treatment. What are the surgical options? Number one is Yang's operation that will close the enteroneers and patient us to breathe through the mouth actually. As you close the nears, it, it, it is proved that with the, about one or two years, the turbinate regains its normal position, regains its epithelization and normal position. And once it regains its normal position, then you open the nasal cavity again. This is called Young's operation or modified Young's operation. Sometimes to give constant supply of, of, of saliva in the nose so that to keep the nose moist, not dry, we sometimes we take the parotid duct. As you know, the parotid duct open in the uh, uh, second upper insert teeth here. So we can take the opening from here and then make a window in the maxillary sinus and then enter the duct to the maxillary sinus. This is called diluting of the parotid duct to the maxillary sinus so that the nose has got constant supply of saliva and that discards the crust and that heals the nasal cavity. This is the surgical treatment, but mostly we use medical treatment in the form of alkaline nasal dose, normal saline, and 25% glucose in glycerin. Hardly we use surgical treatment. That is the management of also, uh, uh, you have to give some psychotherapy that is not a cancer, uh, uh, we will be all right, because the patients, those who are married, they're very frustrating, you know? They're very frustrated that well, what would be happen. So it gives some psychotherapy reassurance, that nothing will be happen, we'll be all right. So that is all about, now, the clinical problem solving questions. A 15 years old female patient presents with foul smelling nasal discharge and spice of crash from the nose and occasional epistaxis. What is your diagnosis? So my diagnosis, atrophic rhinitis. Next question, what are the testing condition of the nose? Cause of crusting on the nose. A, uh, in cardiology, actually, we ask this question. All the symptoms of nasal, nasal diseases, cause of inner nasal obstruction, cause of bilateral nasal obstruction, cause of sneezing, running nose, cause of epistaxis, cause of crusting condition of the nose, cause of foul smelling nasal discharge. All causes, cardiology, we ask in the oral exam. And you know, sometimes we also put in the written paper. Okay. So, crusting condition of the nose, apart from the atrophic rhinitis, Rhinitis, KGS, uh, rhinosteroma, you know, unhealed septal perforation, lots of crash coming up, following turbinate trim operation, following phase, 
all our coils are practicing continuous. So that's all uh, for today. I think uh, that's all. I'm very sorry that uh, I wanted to, today actually I was planning to uh, speak all around uh, Bengali. I'll not speak even a single word of English, but I'm very sorry that yeah, I did not. I tried, but I failed. So thank you very much. শেষ করি স্যার হ্যাঁ শেষ করি থ্যাংক ইউ ভেরি মাছ থ্যাংক ইউ ফর your health as a patient and thank you the peers ji sir asankho dhanyabad amaderke samay dewar jonno ji sir amra live ta shesh korchi